serial entrepreneur, and she has like 50 different things doing, so it's just easier to say serial entrepreneur. Very successful. Have a seat. Yes. Do you mind uh, sitting here? Because sure. JT says he wants to auction this chair. So well, I'd like to have a few of this chair before he auctions it. Oh, how? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> hey, Nice meeting you, dear. Yeah, I have been a fan of yours for the longest time. Yeah. I've watched a lot of shows, especially, you know, things like Sir Pico, Grand, uh, yeah. Yeah. Godfather, yeah. Uh, what's the other one that's with? Scarface. Uh -huh. but, the, the, but the most interesting show I love the most is the one that's Simon. You know, the one in Atlanta. Uh -huh. I really love that one because of the emotion that it show. And then, you know, it's very different from all those violent shows that everybody seems to be. Simone. 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 That was Simone. the one that a a Andrew uh, Nichol. Sorry, before I, before I say anything. Oh, yeah. okay. Go ahead, Jim. Say, say, say. Sorry. Sorry, sorry. I, I missed my cue. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Simone. Simone, and nobody saw it, but Simone is Andrew Nichol did this movie about a pixel girl who was created by a kind of mad sort of director in Hollywood who wants to get ahead. He, he, he creates a, uh, what do you call it, a kind of a hologram of a character who becomes <laughs> extremely famous. And, and he's behind her. He's like a ventriloquist, but she's become this beautiful, and, he's, and she gets bigger and bigger until she's as big as the biggest movie star in Hollywood, but she's not real. She's made of pixels. And it goes on and on, and finally, at one point, she wins all kinds, and he, he's her voice, and he puts actors together, and nobody sees her, and puts all that, and anyway, one day, she gets the Oscar nomination, and she wins the Oscar, and she comes up there, front, and got it all done with smoke and everything, but she, he sort of did, and she goes up there, and she, she thanks everybody, but him. <laughs> And he can't believe it, but he wrote the lines for him. He just left himself out. <laughs> it's got that kind of wit to it, and it was almost a good film. It wasn't. <laughs> Who understands those things? It was almost. Oh, I love the idea. So the, the question I wish to ask you is, yes. you know, among all this character you've been acting in the, yeah. the movie and in the play, yeah. which one best describe you in person? Oh, I don't know. If things change, you you know, you change when you're trying to try to act as or somewhat chameleon. I tell you, it's like, um, I think of acting sometimes as painting. You know, there's a canvas and you put something on it. And it becomes an extension of your inner thoughts or whatever, your ideas. And you're, you're not really, that's not really you, but it is. So the characters that I play, I am, you know, I, I, I don't know. I, I, I can say the closest to me is the thing that's closest to me is playing a character that's expressing what I'm going through in my life at the time I'm doing the movie. And I've done that sometimes. Uh, I can't say Scarface is like me, but the expression, the undercurrent, and what I was trying to talk about is, is something coming from me, as if I were painting it, as if I were writing a book about it. You know what I'm saying? It is not me, but it is. But there have been roles that mirrored a lot more of what I was going through in my life. Nobody goes to see this picture. I get criticized by, about this picture. But Bobby Deerfield is, a, is, again, in part, a pretty good picture. And it's a film I made in 76. And it was really, I was going through a really rough time. I play a racing car driver who falls in love with a girl who's dying. And it was, uh, it was roundly criticized. It. But I saw it recently, and I sort of liked it. 
I, I sort of, I didn't, when I first saw it, like it, I turned away from it. But recently, because time has a lot to do with the reproductions of movies, you, things change. Your appetites change. Your perspective uh, on audiences, too. I mean, something that was before. And that's the wonderful thing about cable. You can see that again. I happened to see it. I haven't seen the movie in 20 years. And there was something about what I was going through. It reminded me of the time then of what I was going through. And it, I put it into the character. So it had a very personal connection. And I love that kind of thing. I wish I could do it more. But in that film, I thought I succeeded. But, you know, it wasn't accepted. It wasn't liked. So it doesn't always have to be liked. But I did like that. And so that's the closest to me, because I was going through that. Yeah. So, we'll do that afterwards. Do that afterwards. I got two more left. I got two more. We'll do that afterwards. That's the final one. No, no, no final one. No final one. No final one. No final one. Because this is uh, said by the founder, uh, founder, father of Singapore, which I want to dedicate to all of you. To all the young and all, not to all the old, look at the horizon, see the rainbow, and just go and ride it. Thank you. That's great.